the next day. The old man said he wanted to install some more software, so he powered me down. When I came to, he said Mr. Silton had a joke for me, and that I should pull his finger. I don't think I got the joke. So the old man powered me down again. This time when I pulled Mr. Silton's finger, I got the joke. But it wasn't very funny. The old man then explained that he had installed a special chip which allowed me to clean away anything that was broken. He said it also tells me how many things are nearby. And how many smaller things are in a bigger thing. It all sounded very complicated. But he said all I really had to do was, pause, and it would bring up all the information I needed. He then said he wanted me to find and clean all of the items in the room. He told me there would be some chains to climb, but that would be nice and easy, as I just had to press up. He then finished by saying, when I had collected all the items, I should come back here. The old man then asked the old lady Heather and I to follow him outside. I was happy too, as it was a lovely hot day. The old man said he was worried that Alice had been calling again. She had filled up a small barn with old bicycles and newspapers. Heather said, this would be a perfect chance to properly test my new powers. The old man thought for a second, then said, using the Stepto chip, I should find and clean at least 300 things. When we explained to Alice what we wanted to do, she seemed scared. But after the old lady kindly explained that, well, the barn was starting to smell, she said it would be okay. One last thing, said the old man, if you want to use a door, just push up. When I was about to enter the old barn, Mr. Silton said he had seen some mushrooms growing inside. He asked me to give him any that I found, he then winked, but I wasn't sure why.
The old man was very happy with everything that I had cleaned. But I think Mr. Silton was even more happy with his mushrooms. It wasn't the days getting shorter or the evenings getting colder. It was the falling leaves that really made me feel sad. As we watched the trees blowing in the breeze, the old lady said, the leaves must fall before the blossom comes. She had already explained the seasons to me, so for once, I actually understood. But it didn't make me feel any better. The old lady obviously heard enough of my moping, and said, Right, next week we're going to have a party. For some reason she insisted that we were all going to wear costumes. Heather was very excited and said, I've got some perfect ideas. It was terrifying. Everyone was dressed like someone else. I think I was meant to be some kind of pumpkin, as everyone kept shouting, It's the great pumpkin. Still, at least Mr. Silton was having fun telling everyone his joke. And I suppose Heather's costume was quite flattering. After what seemed like forever, everybody left, and things got back to normal. Heather was allowed to watch a scary film before she went to bed, but I had to help Alice and Mr. Deck clean up. I wasn't happy about this, but the old man said if I was quick, then I could watch the end of the film with them. Alice was vacuuming, and Mr. Deck was taking down the decorations, so I thought I should clean up the plates and glasses. splitting sound was the fire alarm. As usual Mr. Deck, blamed Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. But then the professor appeared. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. Alice looked confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. When we went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked, and playing his guitar. He shouted down, when I finish this song, I'm going to fly. The old lady said, oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, you know what to do.
By the time I had made it up to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down. But he was acting even more bizarre than usual. After an hour or so, Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. Still, he was soon laughing and joking with the paramedics. One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't think Mr. Silton liked that. So he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmallow Marso. I don't think he liked that either. But at least he was still in one piece. A month or so later, Heather and I were playing video games. When the old man said he wanted me to come outside. He said it had been a year since I had arrived. So, he had a present for me. He placed the teddy bear high up on a wooden platform, he then told me I should try to pick it up. <laughs> try as I might, I couldn't reach the teddy bear. However, I still don't understand what happened next.
Was I dead? Was this heaven? It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. It was the shoes the old man was going to give me. I thought I might as well put them on. They were just the right size. The old man's hat fit me pretty good as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I wore it. Amazingly, the shoes allowed me to defy gravity. Or maybe it was the hat.